J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program brought to you by Jell-O and Jell-O Pudding, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Free For All. Here, there, and everywhere, folks are praising Jell-O's wonderful new locked-in flavor. They're finding that Jell-O's six delicious flavors are now more delicious than ever, thanks to Jell-O's new process of locking the flavor right into the tiny Jell-O particles. Up until now, gelatin desserts lost flavor all the time they spent in the package. Often, by the time you used them, you found their flavor had faded and become flat. And sometimes, the desserts you made with them just missed being as good as you had expected. But today, Jell-O has changed all that. No more fading flavor. Every last bit of Jell-O's original richness is locked into Jell-O's crystal-like particles for keeps. And time can't touch it, can't steal it, any of it away. Your next package of Jell-O will prove it. Just open the package. Notice there's no heavy fruity aroma. No sign of escaping flavor. But the instant you dissolve the Jell-O, you unlock its captive flavor, and out it rushes in all its full, thrilling goodness. Order several packages of Jell-O tomorrow. The flavor never goes away. We put it in and it's there to stay. played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you our versatile master of ceremonies who started work this week on a new motion picture. Yes, sir. A man who is as much at home in front of a camera as he is before a microphone. Like you said, I'm versatile. Say. <laughs> a man who has a profile like John Barrymore, and have you seen him lately? Jack Benny. <laughs> Uh, Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking And Chubby, uh, you can rip me uh, You can rip me about it all you want to But it sure feels good to be making a picture again I tell you, Don, that's really my racket Well, Jack, I must admit that I do enjoy you on the screen immensely I really got a big kick out of your last picture uh, You know, the, the one you made with Fred Allen With Allen? Uh, wait a minute, that wasn't my last one, Don See, I made Charlie's aunt after that Remember when I was dressed like a lady? Oh, yes. Well, to tell you the truth, Jack, I didn't get to see that one. You didn't see Charlie's aunt? <laughs> hmm. No, I meant to, but somehow I just didn't get around to it. Oh. By the way, Jack, who's the director of your current movie? Is it someone you've had before or somebody new? Hmm. Didn't get around to it, eh? <laughs> now, look, Don, <laughs> I hesitate bringing it up right now. But you've been on this program eight years, and, and you know our rule about not seeing my pictures. <laughs> so, uh, so what about it? Oh, yes, Jack, I forgot. Here you are. Thanks. <laughs> now, I, um... <clears throat> I, uh, I hate, uh, <laughs> I hate to, uh, I hate to do this, Don, but if I make an exception of you, they'll all expect it. You know, rules is rules. Anyway, answering your question, oh, here's your change, Don. Thanks. <laughs> um, answering your question, the director of my latest screen vehicle is none other than Lubitsch, Ernst Lubitsch. Lubitsch? Well, that's wonderful. That's a great break for you, Jack. It is? Why, certainly. You know, there's a saying in Hollywood, that Lubitsch can even make a lamppost act. Don. <laughs> Don, any resemblance between me and a lamppost is purely coincidental. I'm slim, yes, but that's all. Anyway, Don, as I was saying, it sure feels good to be in front of a camera again. Right back where I belong. Uh, what was that? Oh, hello, Mary. Hello. Uh, what was that you said? I was telling Don I'm very happy. I'm 
right back where I belong. Oh, selling suits, eh? <laughs> I mean pictures. I'm making a movie. Oh, that's right. You haven't sold a suit since you worked in your father's store in Waukegan. Of course. That's over 20 years ago. The one you're wearing held up nice. <laughs> Mary, one thing about my father's merchandise, it lasted and lasted. In fact, Dad used to have a slogan, buy this suit and you'll get sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> we sold plenty of them that way. Well, I'll have to admit, Jack, that outfit you're wearing is very snappy. Certainly. How do you like the pants? Get a load of the cuffs. You look like puss in boots. <laughs> when my feet get cold, I roll them down. I can go along with a gag, sister. <laughs> And incidentally, Mary, instead of coming in here with those wisecracks, why don't you congratulate me on the start of my new picture? You know, uh, Carol Lombard is my leading lady. Oh, boss, come now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Carol Lombard is my love interest. Lombard and Benny, hey, that's quite a team. Have you many romantic scenes with her, Jack? Yes, <laughs> lucky girl. Imagine... <laughs> No, look, imagine I, I make love to her all day long, and then at six o'clock, she drives home to Gable. <laughs> <laughs> but say, that Gable is a pretty good leading uh, man himself. You know, he's no slouch. Oh, Jack, you're just as attractive to women as Clark Gable any day. Well, I wouldn't say that, Mary. That's sweet of you, but Clark is a pretty handsome guy, you know. Oh, you're just being modest. You don't hear women talk about you like I do. Oh, now, Mary, stop, will you? I, I, I'll admit I'm not homely, but, uh, but uh, what, uh, what do the women say about me? You asked for it, brother. Never mind. <laughs> you, you always have to start something, don't you? Always. Say, Mr. Benny, I heard you talking before, and you think Carol Lombard is pretty good looking, don't you? Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Uh, <laughs> what was that you said? I forgot now. <laughs> what a brain. Dennis, you said something about Carol Lombard being very good looking. Oh, yes. Well, I go with a girl that's better looking than any movie star you ever saw. Oh, you go with a girl? She is. Well, say. What's her name, Dennis? Thelma Gray, Crestview 7071. <laughs> Oh, well, you, you didn't have to give me your telephone number. I might as well. You'll force it out of me later. <laughs> now, now, hold on, young man. When did I ever threaten you to get a girl's phone number? Remember in New York when you took me to the top of the Empire State Building? Never mind. And you held me over the edge by one leg? <laughs> I was just showing Al Smith how strong I was. <laughs> anyway, you're lucky you didn't go out with that girl. You've still got your watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, so much for your love life, kid. Now, uh, how about a song? Okay, I'm gonna sing Carry Me Back to the Lone Prairie and I dedicate it to the Palm Springs Vaqueros. Who cares, you little squealer? <laughs> go ahead with your song. Crestview 7071. <laughs> I must remember that. Hold it a minute. Answer the phone, Mary. Okay. Hello? Jello program? Why aren't you listening to it? <laughs> Mary, find out who that is. Hello? Hello, this is Barton speaking. Belly Laugh Barton. Is Grandma there? <laughs> Just a second. It's for you, Jack. It's that kid you hired for a gag man. Oh, oh, Belly, huh? Oh, oh, hello, Belly. Uh, what's on your mind? Listen, <laughs> I've got a terrific gag you can pull on Phil Harris tonight. Is he there yet? No, no, what's the gag? Well, this afternoon I told him to ask you how many hairs on a monkey's face. Uh-huh. And when he asks you, you say, the next time you shave, count them. Oh, oh. Well, now, wait a minute, Belly. That's kind of an old gag, isn't it? Look, you know it and I know it, but the younger generation never heard of it. <laughs> well, uh, well, maybe you're right, Belly. Are you sure, uh, are you sure Phil will ask me that? Yeah, and when you pull the answer, you'll never know what hit him. Yeah, he'll really burn. Thanks, kid. And listen, I'll call you up after the show, let you know how it went over. Uh, where can I reach you? Crestview 7071. <laughs> <laughs>
What? Hey, wait a minute, Dully. Hey, Dully. Hmm. Oh, well, that's a good gag he gave me anyway. The next time you shave, count them. I must remember that. Sing, Dennis. I can hardly wait. <laughs> I'm a roving cowboy Far away from home Far from the prairie Where I used to roam Where the dog is gone now And the wind blows free Oh, my heart is yonder On the lonely Carry me back to the long prairie where the coyotes howl and the winds blow free. And when I die, you can bury me neath a western sky on the long prairie. Give me back my saddle, give me back my gun, give me back that bronco that I used to run. Let me spread my blanket by a peaceful stream. Hear the cowboy singing. By the campfire's gleam Oh, carry me back To the lone prairie Where the coyotes howl And the wind blows free And when I die You can bear Carry back to the Lone Prairie sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, I must say that your voice is improving every week. No kidding. Someday you'll be another Bing Crosby. All right, Don. Dennis has a voice like Bing Crosby. Thanks. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> All right, Don. Bing Crosby. Oh, Jack, this one is so ridiculous. <laughs> Don, go ahead. Why don't you do it yourself, you coward? I'm not the announcer. Now, go ahead, Don. Bing Crosby. Oh, all right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the next time you're in the mood for attempting an economical dessert, why don't you go a Crosby Street to your neighborhood grocer? <laughs> yes, yes. And bing home a package of jello. <laughs> there. See? There, there you are. Bing home jello. Well, I haven't talked like that since I was three years old. <laughs> Oh, act your size, Willow. <laughs> that happens to be a very clever idea for a commercial. Did you think of it yourself, Mr. Benny? Who else? That's right, who else? <laughs> well, I like it. I think of that kind of stuff all the time. My mind runs that way. I wonder if your father can make a straitjacket to match those pants. <laughs> Mary, let me analyze it for you. In the first place, well, look who's here. I'm so glad you were able to make it tonight, Phil. Sorry I'm late, pal, but I was out in my car listening to the program. Oh, listen to the program, eh? Well, how is it? Jackson, you need me. <laughs> well, um... Well, for your information, Phil, there's an old Chinese proverb that says... Benny need Harris like Apple need worm. <laughs> and incidentally, that glint in my eye is Jimmy Dorsey. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You know, I heard him last night. Ah, oh, don't get excited, Jackson. It was only a rib. Uh-huh. Hey, what's all this ballyhoo about you making a new picture? That's right, Phil. I started working on it this week. Well, here, I ain't gonna see it. Thanks. <laughs> The picture isn't made yet, and already it's gross ten dollars. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I uh, I must tell Alexander Corder about that. Um, but I wouldn't jump to a conclusion, Phil. You see, Carol Lombard is in it, and Lubitsch is the director. Not Ernest Lubitsch. No, not Ernest. The name is Ernst. Ernst. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his pivot tooth go around. <laughs> well, if it stops on the red, you win. <laughs> you know, I can go along with a gag. <laughs> Believe me. Say, Mr. Benny. Yeah? Is that the same Mr. Lubitsch that directed Marlene Dietrich and Margaret Sullivan and Maurice Chevalier? Yes, sir. And Claudette Colbert and Gary Cooper and Greta Garbo? <laughs> yep. And now he's directing me. Is he slipping? No. <laughs> no, he's not slipping. The trouble with this gang, you're all too close to me. You don't realize I'm a good actor. Say, Jackson, how'd you ever land a big director like that? You mean Lubitsch? Jack held him over the Empire State Building until he signed the contract. Oh, stop. To hear you talk, you think I was the strongest guy in the world. Now, let's cut out this nonsense and go on with the program. Let's have a number, Phil, before Miss Livingston dreams up something else. All right, what do you want to hear? Music, but I'll take what I can get. <laughs> no, no. Now, go ahead. Okay. Oh, by the way, Jackson, I want to ask you something. Yeah? Yeah, what is it? How many hairs on a monkey's face? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Phil. Oh, my goodness, I forgot the answer. <laughs> Mary, Mary, get me belly laugh on the phone quick. The number is Crestview 7071. You didn't forget that, you wolf. <laughs> Oh, never mind. It's too late to pull the gag now. Let's see. Phil is supposed to say to me how many hairs on a monkey's face. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. Oh, what do you want? Boss, this is the last straw. Either you get rid of Mr. Billingsley or I'm going back home to Arabia. <laughs> oh, don't get so excited. What's our border done now? Well, you know that suit of armor we got in the hall? Yes. And you know how it's holding that big spear? Yes. Well, I was waxing the floor in front of it just now, and the first thing I knew, I took off. <laughs> oh. Oh, Mr. Billingsley is in it, eh? What in the world is he doing in that suit of armor? This week, he's King Arthur. <laughs> King Arthur? Yeah, better come home early. He's gonna hold court in the dining room tonight. Well, that's just silly. If you remember the legend, King Arthur's knight gathered at a round table. Our table is square. It's round now. He saw it on the corner. <laughs> well, this is your fault, Rochester. You know how eccentric Mr. Billingsley is. How did he ever get a hold of a saw? A friend sent it to him in a loaf of bread. <laughs> That table is a genuine antique. Save the corners, Rochester. I'll think of something. <laughs> now, look, I'll be home soon, so let Mr. Billingsley wear that suit of armor. <laughs> what was that? What happened? King Arthur just fell off his horse. <laughs> horse? What horse? He's got a saddle on Carmichael. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, look, Rochester, I'll be home soon, so humor Billingsley. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? I finished making those Christmas cards for Mr. Lubitsch. All right. All right, hang up. He'll like them, boss. Right under the Santa Claus, I got his name in big silver letters. Ernest Lubitsch. That's Ernst Lubitsch. Ernst. Now do them over. How many T's in Ernst? <laughs> Jackson. 
Just one. It sounds like more. Now, goodbye. Hmm. If you want anything done right, you got to do it yourself. All right, Phil, let's have your band number. Okay. Wait a minute. Answering your question, Phil, the next time you shave, count them. Ha <laughs> ha, I knew I'd think of it. <laughs> That was Wham Bang Crash Zowie, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Phil, I've got to say one thing about your arrangements. You certainly take care of the brass section. Now, wait a minute, Jackson. I got three violins in the band, and they're playing all the time. Yeah, but who can hear them? Another thing, two pianos. What do you got two piano players for? They're Siamese twins. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And now, ladies and gentlemen, gee, I didn't know that. The Siamese twins, eh? Didn't you see the three of us dancing at Charlie Foy's the other night? <laughs> yes, but I thought I was drunk. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... Yeah, I couldn't understand it. I only had ginger ale. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that next Sunday, we want you all to listen in because we're going to present our annual drama of the gridiron. Yes, sir, we're all going to play football. We're really going to kick it around. We kick it around every Sunday. <laughs> Never mind. And I would also like to announce... Say, Jackson, uh, look, do you mind if I leave now? I've got a friend waiting for me out in the hall. What? Well, he just got in town a few days ago, and I'm having dinner with him. I'm sorry, Phil, but your friend can very well wait till the program's over. That's a fine way to treat Leo DeRocha. I don't care who... Leo DeRocha? You mean the manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers? Yeah, he's sitting right out in the hall. Well, what are you waiting for? Bring him in. Bring him in. Sure, a guest star for nothing. <laughs> Mary, I just want to say hello. I know him very well. Bring him in, Phil. Okay. So, Leo, Leo's in town, eh? Say, Mr. Benny, who's Leo DeRocha? I just told you, he's manager of them bums. <laughs> Don't you remember, Dennis? I bet you $5 Brooklyn would win the World Series. Oh, yes. How did that ever come out? <laughs> I'll tell you later, kid. Hmm. Well, fellas, here's that man. Well, come on in, Leo. Hiya, Jackson. Glad to see you. Hey, this is quite a surprise, Leo. I, I didn't think you'd get in town till next week. Uh, where are you staying? I'm living over at Georgie Raff's house. Oh, Raff's, eh? Well, uh, well, why didn't you come over to my place, Leo? You'd love it there. Quiet surroundings and... Only 10 minutes from Hollywood, and I've I got a 40-foot heated swimming pool. Now, I know. I got your folder. <laughs> oh, well, then what made you pick out Raff's place? Well, you don't understand, Jackson. I'm Georgie's guest. I'm living there for nothing. Oh! Oh, I see. It's guys like Raff that are ruining the tourist business. <laughs> Oh, for 
Heaven's sake, Mary, I wanted Leo to be my guest, too. I wasn't going to charge him. Oh, Leo, this is Mary Livingston. Well, hello, Miss Livingston. Or may I call you Mary? I've listened to you so often on the radio, I feel I almost know you. Thanks. Gee, how can such a sweet fellow slug an umpire? <laughs> Mary, it's easy, sister. <laughs> good, 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 good. And Leo, uh, Leo, uh, good, good. Leo, uh, <laughs> Leo, this is Don Wilson, our announcer, and Dennis Day, our young tenor. Hello, fellows. Oh, glad to know you, Leo. Say, I was wondering about the World Series, Mr. DeRosha. Who won, the Dodgers or the Yankees? Is that Mick looking for trouble? <laughs> no, no, no. No, forget it, Leo. It's a long story. But, Leo, remember when I saw you that first game at the Yankee Stadium and I said to you, how does it look, kid? And I said, we'll moiter him? Yeah. And then you lost four games out of five. What happened? Well, you can't tell about those things. It's like your radio program. You don't have a good one every week, do you? No, but we, we don't have... Four bad ones out of five. Look, Jackson, you've been called bums as often as we have. <laughs> oh, I... Look at I, I didn't look at it quite that way. Come know? on, Leo, let's go. Let's get out of here. Now, wait a minute, Phil. I want to talk to him. Say, Leo, uh, didn't I hear you... I mean, weren't you on Fred Allen's program a few weeks ago? Yeah, what a sweet guy. I got laughs on his show. Get laughs here if you'd read your lines right. You know? <laughs> Don't ad live with me, brother. I'm pretty fast on those answers. Now, go on. You don't even know how many hairs on a monkey's face. Oh, yeah? Well, the next time I shave, I'll count them. <laughs> Wait. What am I saying? That was wrong. Give me that again, Leo. Come on, Leo, will you? Let's go. Georgie's waiting for us across the street at the tropics. Come oh. on. Okay. Georgie, is Raft having dinner with you two guys? Yes. You want to join us? Sure, I'll be glad to. Oh, Don, carry on with the show, will you? Who am I going to talk to, Dennis? Mary is here. Stick out your stomach, and she's good for three jokes. <laughs> Come on, Leo. Let's go, Phil. Come on. Well, Leo, I'm sure glad you came out to Hollywood. No hard feelings, even though I lost a little dough on the Dodgers. Reminds me, I owe Jesse $50. But I want to tell you something, Leo. You got a great ball club there. And next time, you'll be right back in the series. I know I'm going to bet on you, and I'll bet on you every time you play. That's me. I'm a stick with you. Here's a dessert, friends. It certainly does live up to its beautiful name. It's called Hawaiian Sunburst. And you've never seen a dessert that's more glamorous and attractive. Just picture it. A shimmering mold of deep crimson raspberry jello surrounded in a sunburst effect of shining wedges of golden Hawaiian pineapple. And how easy it is to make. You just dissolve a package of jello imitation raspberry flavor in one and one half cups of hot water. Then add one fourth teaspoon of salt, one half cup of the juice from the can of pineapple slices. Chill in individual molds and in serving, circle each mold with the wedge shaped pieces of canned sliced pineapple. What a delight to the eye and a treat to the taste. So get them both and make up this lovely, luscious dessert. But be sure when you buy to ask for Jell-O, because only Jell-O's new locked-in process gives you all the flavor, always. We're a little late, so good night, folks. Did you know that the folks who make Jell-O also make three of the most delicious puddings you ever tasted? Jell-O chocolate, Jell-O vanilla, and Jell-O butterscotch puddings. And are they swell? Take Jell-O vanilla pudding. Why, even Grandma would be proud to make a pudding as smooth and rich as this one. Its wonderful homemade flavor lends itself to luscious puddings, cream pies, tarts, cakes with cream fillings, and lots of other grand desserts. And it takes only a few pennies to buy, a few minutes to make. Tomorrow, when you order Jell-O, ask for Jell-O puddings, too. Jell-O puddings are just like Grandma's, only more so. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. KFI, Los Angeles.